Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Once upon a time, a man decided to join a monastery and take a vow of silence. After the first year of complete silence, he was allowed to say two words. Eager to share his spiritual insights, he exclaimed, food bad. <laughs> the following year went by, and again he was granted two words. This time, he eagerly said, bad hard. Fast forward the next year, and he was given the chance to say two more words. With a glint in his eyes, he joyfully declared, I quit. <laughs> the head monk replied, Well, it's a surprise. You've been complaining since you got here. <laughs> the man quit the monastery because during his time there, he couldn't experience the power of God's grace except for expressing complaints. However, the stories we heard in today's Mass teach us a valuable lesson about the power of God's grace. It shows us that no heart is too hard to be changed by God's grace. In fact, it can completely transform our lives. We are reminded of the conversion of Paul. Paul was a zealous young Pharisee who believed strongly in his own understanding of God's plan of salvation. He did not accept the incarnation, passion, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. When Paul heard the, the apostle preaching the gospel, he was filled with anger. He considered their message to be blasphemy and made it in his mission to destroy this new religion. He even went far, he even went so far as to persecute and kill the Christians. It's hard to imagine anyone more opposed to Jesus Christ and the church than Paul. But everything changed for Paul on the road to Damascus. In the midst of his anger, Jesus appeared to him and spoke to his heart. A ray of divine light broke through the darkness of Paul's mind. From that moment on, Paul's life took a different direction. Gradually, freed from his self-centered ambition, he became a messenger of God's saving grace. He brought hope and mercy to sinners on the nations, using his natural talents to build Christ's eternal kingdom. Sometimes, we struggle to believe in the transforming power of God's grace because we have the wrong idea of how it works. We expect it to happen instantly, like in a Hollywood movie, where a horrible sinner become a saint in a matter of hours. In reality, God's work in our souls takes time. St. Paul's encounter with Christ was a powerful experience, but it was only the beginning of a long spiritual journey. He spent years in prayer, silence, and Bible study before he received his missionary calling. Similarly, the 12 apostles spent three years learning from Jesus before they were given a ta the task of converting the world. These examples show us that God's grace usually works gradually and requires our patience and perseverance. 
if we haven't experienced the transforming power of God's grace in our own lives, it may be because we haven't been open to it. God is always present and working, but we have the freedom to choose to pay attention or not. Just as Paul and the apostles responded positively to Christ's call, we too must be willing to follow him no matter the cost. In today's world, it's easy to prioritize worldly pursuits and find happiness in material possessions and popularity. But Paul reminds us that everything in this world will pass away. We must prioritize our friendship with Christ above all else and strive to know, love, and follow him every day. In doing so, we allow the transform transforming power of God's grace to work in our lives and in the lives of those around us. But our mission doesn't stop here. The transforming power of God's grace is a message of hope that many people are unaware of. They may see Christianity as the burdensome set of rules, or they may seek personal change and growth through secular means. As believers, we are privileged to know and believe in this message. Our faith is strengthened when we share it with others. We are called to be messengers and ambassadors of Christ. So when we receive Jesus in Mass, let's thank him for the gift of grace that transforms our lives. Let's also think about those around us who need to hear about this grace and consider how best to share it with them.